I'm going to introduce Nick Mack, who is our other producer today, who will be talking about his facility up at Watertown, South Dakota. Uh, and Nick, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. I'm Nick Mack from Watertown, South Dakota. I feed cattle with my two brothers and one son, Francis. The two brothers are Virgil and Lee Mack. Uh, we started on a little different type basis uh, when we first started. We started just with a flat pour of cement and then, <clears throat> excuse me, and then added the buildings as we went on. So you can see as in the front to the left, right to the left, there is two different structures there, which uh, we have an alley between the two buildings. So uh, they weren't all built in the same time. We did start in 1998. Then uh, we moved on. We got the, the, there's actually three different barns. The, the width of them is uh, uh, 90 feet in the pan space on the, on the two bigger buildings. The one where we feed on the one side, just on the south side, they're all facing to the south with the opening. Uh, the, whip, the one to the north is actually a 70-foot barn by uh, 270 feet long. So we'll go on to the next one where, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that's the one to the north, the 70-foot barn where we have the uh, open alley. And when you have an, uh, an open door, uh, it just seems like you'll always have a draft. So anytime you can eliminate the openings to where uh, we always shut the doors during the day if there's any type of, of uh, wind or breeze in the wintertime, it just creates a draft, not so much in the summertime. Now, one of the things, like Ron did say, the, the comfortability of these uh, buildings is, is just really, really nice about it. Uh, you'll see maybe in the summertime where you have that 15 to 20 degree cooler temperature underneath that roof. So I guess I was just going to point that out where, uh, you know, there's a, there is definitely a big difference in, uh, in temperature in the summertime as much as in the wintertime. You always feed for the, you always try to eliminate for the bad days, not so much as how many, how many good days is there. <laughs> so we'll go on to the next one. And the alleyways, our alleyways are 12 to 15 feet wide. Now, that's the only way we have for traveling the cattle back and forth. We already have the walls of the building and the, the bunk system. So we use, we use that as our main alley to move the cattle back and forth from their pens, which uh, I guess we feel it's very sufficient. You just have to take your time. It isn't 30 or 40 feet wide. so. You just have to take your time. Don't push the cattle, and, and they're they're ready to go when they when they get an open hole, they're ready to walk up and down and, and make new tracks. So, we'll go on to the next one with the the pens and uh, okay, like the pens, uh, the 135 we we have split at 90 feet wide on on this particular barn, and that holds 300, and and through the summer we go with about 40 feet on a capacity 40 square foot. The winter time is when we do move up and uh, give them some more room for, uh, we have just seems a little bit more unconditional weather to move snow and, uh, and get things uh, more under control in the winter time. So we do give them some more room versus in the winter versus the summer. Density, uh, we do, uh, okay, I had already covered the 300 head per pen on that uh, square footage in, for the, in the wintertime. But in uh, the summertime, I would say they're probably more, it isn't such an issue with uh, down to 40 square feet. When they, when they got the shade and then they got the, the cooler weather, they're just a, they're, they're just a lot more comfortable uh, than standing on the outside pen. We, we buy the cattle. I would say from 400 up to 1,000 pounds. We've got the roughage, we've got the shell corn, so we just kind of work out whichever way the best buy is on the cattle. We really don't have a set weight limit on what we actually particularly buy. On the roofing part, here we, uh, 
we do see where uh, we will have some condensation problems. It won't show up the first three or four or five years, but after you get out eight to 10 years, that's when we start to see the problems, like if you have a lot of fog, that fog will be so thick. It'll hang in them buildings, and eventually you're gonna, when the fog does leave, that moisture will connect, collect up against that roof, and that's, if that hangs in there on mornings when you go through a spell of high humidity, heavy fog, uh, maybe we don't get the, the circulation, but we just definitely seem to get a lot more fog uh, when you get that, you're going to have, then you're going to have that acid starting to hang on the roofs, and eventually you'll, we, we did, we did have some pitting at one time, so that, that usually comes about eight to ten years down the road. So the split curtain, uh, we, when we first started, we had the, the curtains, and they said they would probably last eight to ten years. Well, that first curtain is like 14 years old. On, on your left hand side there where the green arrow is pointing towards it so they they obviously uh, you take care of them they definitely hang in there a lot longer than what they anticipate that they probably would last so the the electric curtain on 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 the further left there where the green arrow is now that that's definitely more easily to control the bottom comes down and and the top basically rolls up so it's a it's a very easy curtain to to handle and move however you need it to move and and very very quickly I guess for that for that part too so we'll go in our feeding uh, we feed twice a day uh, clean the waters out uh, every 10 days uh, basically check the cattle I do the feeding 90% of it myself. The only time I don't is when I plant corn and the beans at nighttime. Usually that's when the sun feeds. So if with that part and checking them and driving by, that pretty much uh, oversees all the cattle. I can't say that we've had any, any big serious problems uh, feeding uh, with, the, with the smaller, everything's a little bit smaller with our operation the feeding system so it takes a little longer you're going to just you're going to get a lot more time to evaluate the cattle kind of with the the next uh, screen here with the scraping and the cleaning uh, we we clean and scrape there with a little bit smaller system again and uh, you just you're, you're definitely going to have more time to examine the cattle uh, we, we do put two bales per pan clean out uh, like every four days and and like ron said it does it does correlate back to about a bale per head per year on on the on the same uh, bedding for for the annual work we on the bedding we use corn stalks or or wheat straw it uh it doesn't really make no difference on which one uh works best i guess they Whichever one is the handiest probably is more convenient. So then we, uh, the reason why we choose to go to the monoslope, uh, our setup is kind of more so down towards a creek or there's a ravine that runs through it. So we had really no chances to build any lagoons. And I, I asked the questions I, to, if we needed to move back or move the system and they said what what the lagoons would actually all cost. And I, after we got done figuring everything out, that still didn't give you no comfortability. Once you had the roof done and you put them under the roof, it's kind of like Ron said, he liked the steel and he liked the concrete. And the one thing when you have both of them, you definitely got things clean and neat. And that's, I guess that's, that's basically no matter what in agriculture, you keep it clean and neat, it eliminates a lot of small problems that become big problems. What, what I would change for the future, uh, probably insulate right away when you build the building. It seems like you gotta do it anyways, and you just put it off. 
and, and if you wait too long, you end up replacing maybe a section of the roof. I know Ron said he keeps his curtains more open. That probably helps to a quite an extent uh, in the long run if you got good if you got circulation. We're kind of up against trees, so we maybe don't have the exact or the best circulation like he would have. So you got to weigh the situations, and and uh, I guess in our case, I would definitely uh, think about doing your insulation, especially if you're building up against any type of building site or trees or something where it's going to eliminate your circulation. Now, I want to thank you for everything, and if you have any other questions, uh, you can sure uh, put them in, and we'll, we'll address them as soon as we can. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Nick, for sharing your management style on that. I think at this point,